Good morning. This is Rich Nelson with Allendale with a special update. This is January 12th year of 2016. Today is, of course, a series of USD reports, four separate reports to speak of, in, uh, in fact, here. As far as number one issue, now, well, we had the annual production summary. USD goes back and revises all numbers for this past fall's harvest. Now, as far as corn, they actually lowered production by about 53 million bushels. Uh, going from six, uh, six, 13.654 to now 13.601. USDA made this by actually increasing their harvested acreage uh, uh, estimate very slightly, but they also lowered numbers as far as yield. As far as soybeans, production itself was lowered by about 51 million bushels, going from 3.981 million bushels, uh, their most previous estimate here, now 3.930. So corn down 53 million, as far as soybeans, down 51 million from their previous estimates here. That's a good starting point to look at for the old crop balance sheet here. Now, as far as quarterly grain stocks, USDA actually came out very close to trade expectation on corn stocks at 11.212 million, uh, billion bushels. That's how much corn will be left over as of December 1. Now, keep in mind, this is the second phase of the uh, of the four reports. This one's the quarterly grain stocks numbers. So corn actually very close to the average trade guess of 11.237. As far as soybeans, 2.715 billion bushels counted as of uh, December 1. That was actually very close to the trade guess, a 2.720. Wheat stocks were a little higher than than expected, 1.738 billion bushels. The trade guess was 1.698. So as far as this report, neutral on corn and soybeans for the quarterly grain stocks reports. Now, once USDA kind of plugs in the lower production numbers and also messes with some ideas on demand, they start to adjust what they expect for the ending stock number, what's to be left over at the end of the marketing year. On corn and soybeans, that's August 31st. As far as wheat, you're talking May 30th right there. As far as core numbers, like you said, the 53 million bushel drop for production. They did recognize some higher imports, though. Also, they recognize some problems on demand. We've got issues as far as uh, lower non uh, non-ethanol industrial, those things like high fructose corn syrup, those type of numbers. Uh, the biggest issue on the balance sheet, though, as far as demand, was a lowering of exports, 50 million bushels. This certainly was very much needed. Uh, with the ideas as far as a higher import and some lower numbers on demand, that certainly more than offset the drop in production. Therefore, running stocks were raised. 1.785 to now 1.802. So a little higher than the trade was expecting as far as corn stocks. On the soybean side of things here, the numbers were all positive here. Uh, to speak of, looks like uh, production down 51 million bushels like we talked about before. They did lower a few numbers on the, on the demand side. Exports uh, as well as residual use were both lowered a little bit here. Uh, the ending stock, though, fell from 465 to now 440. So positive on beans as far as that goes. On the wheat balance sheet, like I said, there was actually no change as far as production. Uh, they did lower imports a little bit, like, like 5 million bushels. They lowered seed use a little bit as well. And as far as feed and residual, that was lowered by 30. The net result was an increase in ending stocks for wheat going from 911 to 941. So as far as this goes, this report was slightly bearish on corn, certainly certainly bullish as far as soybeans, and as far as wheat, well, there was a wheat stocks increase. Now let's get into the next phase of these numbers here, the winter wheat seedings report. This is actually what kept the wheat uh, really holding a very positive viewpoint here. Uh, very surprising numbers on this side. Uh, the trade was expecting a slight decline from last year's plantings. No doubt about that here. Uh, the average trade, I guess, was 39.320 million acres. The big surprise for us is USD, USD's survey of farmers said, you know what, only 36.609. So 2.7 million acres off the average trade guess. That's very, very supportive and quite a big surprise for us as far as acreage. Now, this is great for wheat. It certainly helps cushion what the trade believed was very burdensome supplies from the U.S. as well as the rest of the world. On the downside, the net negative of that 2.7 million acre surprise, well, that leaves more acres available for spring planting between corn and soybeans. So that might be uh, maybe a little cautionary note for your, uh, cautionary note for us here on the new crop balance sheets for both corn and soybeans. We'll have some arguments about what will happen as far as that goes. Now, as far as other numbers to look at here as on the South American side of things here, there is actually no change at all in any production 
for corn or soybeans from either Argentina or Brazil. USDA kept their numbers unchanged on corn, 81.5 from Brazil, Argentina 25.6. And as far as soybeans, those are left unchanged, Brazil 100.0 million tons and 57.0 as far as that goes. So the net, net, uh, the net story as far as this report, numbers were lowered on soybeans. That was a little positive. The winter wheat seedings report found 2.7 million acres of lower plantings, a good surprise, and positive wheat as well. On the negative side, well, corn stocks were revised a little higher, uh, mainly due to the export problem here. And I've got to say, there's probably another lower in ex- another lowering in exports probably in future reports. So at this point, we can't say it's time to get bullish just yet here on corn. If you have any questions about this report, how to market or how to trade in this environment, feel free to give Allendale a call here, 1-800-262-7538.